disappointed. You've come straight from the dressing room into the interview room. What did the manager say in there to you guys? Um, of course, we can't give them anything. Um, it was difficult for us in the end to go down to 10 men. We did show good fighting spirit. But, yeah, when we have the game, we have to, to finish it off, especially in the first half. When you lose a player of the quality and the importance that Declan Rice plays in a game, how tough is it for you to regroup and change things around as well as a team out there? Yeah, it's not easy because Brighton are a good team. You know, even with 11 players for us, you know, it's difficult to play against them. So we've turned, it makes it tougher. But um, yeah, we gave it our all. Do you feel like the red card was unfair? Have you spoken about that as a team? Yeah, for me, I don't like to put the whole game on the referee, but you know, we just we just want some consistency. You know, in the first half, João Pedro's kicked it out far away. He didn't get anything for it, and Dex just done the littlest touch, and he's got a second yellow for it. So it's just a bit harsh for me, but it is what it is. You know. Do you see it as a blow to drop points this early in the season, particularly here at home? No, no. It's a long season. We know that we've been ahead and lost it. So, you know, it's a long season, you know, I, I'm not too worried. You talk about the chances that you guys had in the game as well. Your good start to the season continued today with a third assist in three games. Do you feel like your relationship with Kai Havertz is continuing to improve? Yeah, I really enjoy playing with him. He's, he's a man that has a, some great movement, um, always in behind the defenders and he's a big threat in the box. So I try to look for him a lot and yeah, he's on fire scoring goals. So I hope he can continue. A little bit of a break now for the internationals and then when you come back it's a North London derby. Important that you, you bounce back in that game? Yeah, we'll be ready for that. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds a bit downbeat. A bit too many clear-cut chances. I mean, a Yari come on and if he gets his head up, he has a, a better shot on goal. But in terms of really hurting Arsenal or making them defend, I don't think they really did that. So that's probably why he says so-so because mm. when you get, what was it, 35, 40 minutes with 10 men, 11 versus 10, got to keep, keep attacking, keep asking them questions, keep making them defend, and eventually you hope they get tired. But I just don't think they did enough. Mm -hmm. Ian, I know in the end, almost your overriding <laughs> sense is one of a relief of getting a point at the end. Um, yeah, you, you, you have to feel that because, um, like I say, it's going to be a long season. Um, there's games, I thought, that we played last season um, and before where, you know, Arsenal should have recognised at a stage where, you know what, OK, it's not going for us, just, let's just make sure we get what we get in and not lose this game. We lost games like that before at Arsenal, so I think you've got to take the point. Um, I still do believe that, um, you know, Declan will probably look at the two, the two yellows and be a bit disappointed, but at the same time, you know, when you look at the referee and some of the decisions he made, you know what I mean? I think, I, I think this referee's got main character energy anyway. But at the same time, you know, when people are kicking the ball away in the first half and you're not booking, and you know, then you kind of do feel a little bit aggrieved by that. So this is why I think that everybody was so upset. That challenge, yes, you look at it and you feel there's no studs showing. No. You know, it's, it's one of those challenges, a genuine attempt for the ball, but no, you get booked for that. And then obviously, you know, again with this one, with everything that's going on. Declan here, we know what he's, he's doing here. But like, you look at Veltman and what he's doing there. Veltman is trying to get him booked. Veltman's got no one to pass this ball to, right? He's got no, look, he, he knows he's there, look. He's got no one to pass it to, he's not even looking at the ball. Veltman knows exactly what he's doing there. And those are the things as well, what the VAR have to look at. He knows what he's doing. He's trying yeah, but, to get him booked and sent but off. He, he, but does Declan Rice have to kick the ball? Yeah, but Declan Rice doesn't have to tick the ball, but at the same time, Declan is, 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 is playing the game, but so is Veltman. So you can recognise what Declan's doing, but then we're not supposed to recognise what Veltman's doing. He's not actually trying to pass that to anyone. He's not looking at the ball. He's acting like he's going to do it so that if it hits Declan, Declan gets booked, Declan's off, and that's what happened. But this is what was made clear to all 20 Premier League sides this season. Yeah. From the referees and the assistants is... You have to retreat and you can't get involved in a set piece in the way that he did. Right. So for not retreating, now look, he knew this and you can almost see the way Chris Kavanagh ap almost apologetically gave that second yellow. It was all, you could, you could see the look in his face, Listen. which was to say, look, you all know this rule now this season. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. That's what, this is what's going to happen. You can, see, you, can see him, you can see him doing that. But then if we're going to be doing stuff like that and people kicking ball away, then do that in the first half to, to Jao Pedro. Book him, the ball went out of play and he still blasted the ball away then do that as well. Mm. I don't care about apologetic face and that. Just, if you're going to play it by the rule, which I thought he'd done today, I thought he'd done everything, you think, well, yeah, he's got to probably do that. He's got to, then do it properly all the way through the game. Mm. That's why the Arsenal fans got the ump today.
Aaron? Consistency. I think that's what Wright is alluding to there, is that if you are going to send Declan Rice off, and Declan Rice will look back at that and go, I've made a mistake here, although Velt yeah. wasn't playing the ball. But if you see these instances in the first half and you do nothing about it, then you're going to expect criticism. Because we want, all people want with VAR, there's no issue with VAR, it's just consistency across the board. So, so not one decision is different to another decision if they're both kicking the ball away. And I think that's where the Arsenal fans certainly today are getting angry because they're like, well, hold on, we've seen that first half, but then you send De you can wait to get the, the second yellow out for Declan. Mm. But, it's, but saying that with the Arsenal fans as well, I think you, you can hear in, in, the, in the stadium there's a little bit of impatience in respect of attacking them. You've got to recognise, like I say, sometime in the game where you think we, we've got to get a point. We've got to make sure we get a point. Keep hold of what you've yeah, got. Absolutely. They made some very good substitutions in NCSO. Adringa coming on, very dangerous players. Pedro already on there causing problems. So you want to make sure you don't lose the game. And that is why I thought in the end the point is a very, very good point. You have to take it. There's no doubt that red card for Declan Rice turned the game on its head. Seven minutes later... Brighton fully capitalised. Mm. Yeah, and again, Lewis Dunk, really, really good player. I mean, no pressure on the ball, so he should drop. But yeah. it's a really good run for Minto, good pace. I mean, to be fair, Gabriel could have brought him down there and there could have been even more trouble. But yeah. it's a, it was a really good pass. But again, they don't drop because there's no pressure on the ball and Arsenal just don't drop. And the gap between the two centre-halves is way too wide. I mean, and he manages to play it in behind both of them. They almost get, they almost cross over. But again, it's really good run for Minto, good penetration through the middle. And Jao Pedro doing what all good centre forwards should do. For the thing up. is, you look at that as well. Um, and when you look at that and, and the play, Play from there, D. You look at Thomas Party. He's he's literally run past him. Yeah. Right. So Thomas Party also has to recognise that in that instant he has to go all the way with Pedro. Mm. At least make a challenge with him. Pedro just blasts past him, and he's 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 kind of jogging back. Those are the things that when you look back at that, you'll say, well, that could have been avoided. Maybe you could have put more pressure on Lewis Dunk. You know, he's he's, he's got the capability. Put more pressure on that. Cut that that um, angle off for him. And I think Partey's got to got to cover Pedro. All right, tell you what, let's get some post-match reaction to that big point for Brighton. Yasin Ayari joins us pitch side now from the Emirates. Yasin, I mean, that looked like a hard-fought point in the end. You had chances in the second half. How do you reflect on it? A well-earned point or it could have been more? No, like you said, it could have been more. Uh, but still, we need to consider that we are unbeaten and we're playing against a good team today. But uh, we, we should create some more chances and, and, and score some goals in the second half when they get the red card. What was said at half-time? Uh, because obviously we saw two very different sides to Brighton. No doubt helped by the red card, but you were much more on the front foot. No, we just said that we, we just need to keep going because we had some chances uh, in the first half also. Uh, but just keep going and, and, and the opportunities will come and we need to be sharper in front of the goal. You had a chance in the second half yourself. How do you reflect on that? I haven't seen it back, but I've heard that uh, the first post was open. But I thought he was he's going to run to the first post, so I, I uh, put it back in the second. But he was already there, so uh, it was I should have put, put it in the first post. OK, I mean, I was just trying to see if we could if we could just run that for you to, to talk us through. In fact, we've got it here. Just tell us what you're thinking. Yasin? Yeah. Yeah, like I said, the, the first post was open. Uh, I thought he was, run, he was running to, to the first post, but yeah, it was still there on the ground. Do, do you think in that moment you, you, you didn't feel you had more time to maybe do that? Do you feel you, you had to go quicker there, yeah? I think in the moment I, I, I thought I, I had a guy uh, beside me, but if yeah. I stay calm and, and, and looked up, I, I will see that I have more time and, and the first post will be open. So there's something I need to work on. Yeah, but look, listen, that's two wins and a draw uh, at the Emirates Stadium. It's still a fantastic start, albeit, you know, you <coughs> may have lost 100% record, but that was always going to be tough against Arsenal today. No, of course, and we knew that before the game, and uh, like I said before, we're unbeaten and we're playing against, against a really good team today, <coughs> and uh, we just have to keep going after the international and, and keep improving, keep getting better in the small details, and, and I think we can, can do good things this season. Yeah, creditable point, and it keeps that feel-good factor very much alive under your new manager, Fabian Herzler. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Yasin Ayari, who joins mm. us uh, live from the Emirates State. <coughs> he speaks well. Yeah. He, I think he almost sounded a bit, almost despondent that he couldn't quite take his chance. Well, but it was well, a difficult one. No? Yeah, it, it was, because the ball came at him very quick. He had to control it and shoot very early. And when, you could see that when he, when he saw it, and what was interesting, what he said was, I'm going to have to work on that. Again, when it comes to certain strikers, certain, like you, you say, natural strikers, you're not worried about what's coming behind you or beside you. Mm. All you're seeing is... The, the, the scenario of what's in front of you right now. And that's where the, ca the calm 
um, clinical strikers will get that under control quickly and pass it into that area because you know the goalkeeper is going to try and get up and get across there. But you've got to get the ball under control early and be calm. If somebody comes and tackles you, then you just got to give them credit for doing that. But you do the basics in that moment of getting under control and hitting it in the right place. You're probably going to be You're probably going to be calm in front of goal. Okay, well, having heard. Recon the first time in the new regime, after the decisions that the club took, after the game, he played 32 players. The game of the Euro 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 of the وليس يدويا بالطريقة المعتادة طول النسخ الماضية ومن المقرر أن يتم تقسيم 36 فريقا على أربع أوعية بتواجد تسع فرق في كل وعاء بحسب تصنيف اليوفا للأندية ويأتي فريق ريال مدريد حامل اللقب على رأس الوعاء الأول وبعدما سيتم اختيار خصمين لكل فريق من كل وعاء أي أن كل فريق سيكون لديه ثمن خصوم ويلعب مباراة ضد أحدهم على أرضه وأخرى خارج أرضه ويمنع تواجد فريقين من نفس البلد في مجموعة واحدة ويمكن أن يلتقي ضد فريقين من بلد واحد كحد أقصى وتنطلق قرعة دور المجموعات لدوري أبطال أوروبا الساعة السابعة مساء اليوم الخميس بتوقيت القاهرة والمملكة العربية السعودية وتنقل قناة بين سبورت الإخبارية مراسم قرعة دور المجموعات بدوري أبطال أوروبا كما سيتم بثها من خلال القناة الرسمية للاتحاد الأوروبي لكرة القدم عبر يوتيوب تصنيف الأندية في دور المجموعات في قرعة دوري أبطال أوروبا التصنيف الأول مانشستر سيتي وبايرن ميونخ وريال مدريد وباريس سان جيرمان وليفربول إنتر ميلان بروسيا دورتموند لايزبيرغ برشلونة التصنيف الثاني بايرن ليفانكوزن أتلتكو مدريد أتلانتا يوفنتوس بنفيكا أرسنال كلوب بروغ شاختار وميلان التصنيف الثالث في نورد سبورتنج لشبونة اندهوفين سيلتيك سالزبورغ بيونج بورز ديامانو